alpha and omega. These letters come as such in the Apocalypse, sometimes not written in full, and everyone gets the message. A message that comes down the centuries and is seen on many of our tabernacles, even on our hosts. The beginning and the end. I remember actually in my Baptist days going to visit my brother in Oxford at Whitson in 1967, it must have been, or 68, it doesn't matter. And I remember going way out to the centre of Oxford to find Woodstock Baptist Church, and on the way back, pausing in front of something I wasn't expecting. It was a brand new Catholic church just as you got into the centre of Oxford, but not quite the centre. I didn't go in, but I was fixed to the ground. There were stained glass windows, or there were open windows you could see through without going in. And there I was, and before me was, behind the tabernacle, on the wall, a modern but powerful emblem of the Alpha and the Omega. Christ was enthroned over that centre of learning, over the brains of man, over those ordinary people who had come into church and were quite devout and edified me on their knees. And he had in his hand the truth. That book which does not change, he is the Logos. As this Gospel tells us, he came to bear testimony to the truth. That truth which all those in Oxford were trying to discover. Hence the emblem of Oxford itself, Dominus Illuminatio Mea, seen on many windows, the Lord is my light. Now, that was going to have a huge effect. It was, as I say, a modern church, but I just noticed that although I was outside, I could see that there before me, there was somehow power coming from that Alpha and Omega at that altar. Now, remember, I'd gone a long way to look for what I thought was the truth, all the way to Woodstock Baptist Church, and I found much warmth, much sincerity, but it wasn't the same as what I was seeing. It was actually quite confusing, because the question hit me for the first time, why? Does one have so many forms of the truth? And here, in all its serenity, there's something which I have found everywhere else I've been in the world. And remember, we were going all over the place because of the parents. They were modern language teachers. And always the same parish church. It was uncomfortable. Now, I want to pause with you for a second. Many, probably, of those worshipping there, as in any other place in 1967, will by now have gone to the Alpha and the Omega. Indeed, many of our friends will by now have gone to the Alpha and the Omega. Only just these last days, I was nearly moved to unexpected tears. Why? I was looking through old pictures, and one after another I was coming against tear-jerkers. One was, as a novice, having fun pretending to work with a fellow novice. Eventually, that fellow novice made his solemn vows but fell in love with the girl working in the guest house. 
and asked to be dispensed and eventually married her. And something happened, which I've noticed has happened in quite a few cases of friends of mine who have done the same after solemn vows. Things didn't go right. First of all, one of the two children they had became very seriously ill. Then he himself got cancer and has died already quite a few years ago. Another picture I was looking at was when I was ordained in Italy, looking at my brethren there and seeing how there similar things were perhaps going to go on. One, for instance, who taught me how to sing mass, who recently has asked to be laicized. I doubt whether he'll have a happy life. How can one, when one has been so close to the centre and to the end, the Alpha and the Omega? And then, before my eyes came graduation, second time round, in Bangor, there we were, happy students, and right next to me was a lassie from our class who was graduating at the same time, and she wrote to me not that long ago saying, by now I'm in a wheelchair with two legs amputated. And I thought to myself, one looks back at these smiles, these moments of unsuspecting joy, and one doesn't realise at all what's ahead. Again, I moved on in these pictures and I saw other points on this side of the Alpha and the Omega. My father, smiling happily. There, there was no tragedy, just a peaceful going on. But there's no coming back, and there's no more giggles and jokes around the table as before. And we don't appreciate these moments and these smiles and giggles and jokes when they're there. We presume to take them for granted, even perhaps to take them too much for granted. This week I was shocked. I had gone to my abbey where I was from here in Ireland and I was talking to the superior was closing the monastery definitively on Easter Day. Listening to what he was saying and seeing how points in the past were influencing all the future. And then I went on to see friends nearby. And what was I hearing there? There was one of them to have a 21st birthday party for a friend of his, but that was not going to take place because about three people nearby, at the age of 21, had all gone into the beyond. One, just a few days earlier, after a night in the pub and imprudent driving. The other two, at the age of 21, had both caught cancer. Again, thoughts were coming to my mind. If that boy, for instance, a week last night, had had one thought, one last thought, before getting into the car, he could have changed all eternity, certainly all time. And many things in our life too. We have moments in our hands, and sometimes a fraction of a moment later we say, Oh, if only something had stopped me before I got to that point, things would still be okay. There are times when we don't see the pain ahead. Just the day before yesterday, I went to see the widow of someone who has helped me all along to set up in the Hermitage. Quite a few of you might know him actually, Tony. And looking at the smile, which was proverbial, and the wit that would come from there, I thought to myself, again, here is time frozen on paper, but there is no presence. It's confusing for the mind. We see warmth, we see joy, we even hear the wit and the jerk, but he's not there. 
and the widow copes as best she can to the emptiness in the chair. And she wanted me to have things from the castle which one time they had owned, Smallmore. It belonged to the Tafts, who had been responsible for setting up the St. Joseph's Young Priest Society. And there are books from the Taft family still there, and things which have been handed down here, writing from the 1800s, letters, devotions, here, the imitation of Christ, given probably as a confirmation present, George Taft, Easter Sunday, 1875, from his affectionate father and mother. And here at the back, in handwriting, a prayer, praying that they, or this person who is inclined to evil, may be of the number of the elect, that I may distrust myself and confide in thee. And on it goes, people who took precisely the issue seriously and probably ended up near the Alpha and the Omega, not too far from their own center. This is all that matters. How clever old Nick is. Look around and look even into your own soul. What proportion of this last week was given to the beyond? Between now and next Sunday, readjust your schedule. Make it clear that your priority is the Alpha and the Omega. And think twice before fritting away time, passing time, killing time, filling time. Live time! Because each second has eternal consequences. And one thing that the souls in purgatory, I know from having translated the manuscript, regret is this. They didn't realise the power of one merit-filled second on this time of eternity. The old place. in the library at Bangor University. As students, a group of us would sit at the same table in the Welsh library. When we return to where turned once the all that could have been, when seen neath these same skies are little things too great when wall and wall hold yesterday in poise where fondest eyes come not again the pain of waiting long to still in their appearing when no more the sound of gentle words, the mingled song of voices wed, come hither as before. Then there is in a scent, scent from the past, a hugeness of long wanting. There is touch of aeons gone away in silence vast that laughing shall not know for moments such come once but linger often and unknown forever in a corner we did own.